What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on the video. And if you could hit that subscribe button, it would mean so much to me. Today, I am so pumped to film this video. I don't think that I've been this excited about filming a video in quite some time. And the other day when I posted on my Instagram, I posted this picture and I asked you guys to send me your most commonly heard muscle building myths and the questions that you personally have on muscle building. So as you can tell by the title of this video, this video is going to cover muscle building 101 and we are going to go over everything that you guys wanted to know in my Instagram post. Without further ado, let's Let's just jump right into it. So the first thing that I want to talk about is my personal experience with muscle building. Now, as I will go over in this video, we will talk about how there are so many different factors and so many different variables that will play a role into your own personal experience with muscle building and everyone has a different story. So I'm just going to kind of give you my experience and then we'll cover everything else from there. In 2013, I joined Gold's Gym for the first time, had absolutely no idea what I was doing. And I I just was doing your traditional bodybuilding movements and nothing has changed because I still am bored by bodybuilding and that was what caused me to seek some other form of fitness. I was just bored with the Gold's Gym situation. I didn't really have a plan. I didn't really know what I was doing. And I know a lot of you guys struggle with that as well because you're looking for some type of structure and routine. And one of the things that I really enjoyed about CrossFit or what had initially drew me to it was the fact that every class was already programmed. You just went in, you did the workout that was on the board. You didn't have to think about anything. You had a coach there to help you and it was more uh, varied and I felt like it was just a different change of pace from bodybuilding, which obviously it is. So in 2014, I switched over from traditional bodybuilding to CrossFit. I say that lightly because I really wasn't like a bodybuilder. Like I literally was a hundred pounds, maybe soaking wet and had zero muscle, was mostly all fat and I just thought that I could do arms and get arm muscles and do like three sets of 10 leg curls and get like, I didn't know what I was doing, that's my point. So anyways, in 2014, I started CrossFit for the first time. I know from my own personal experience and even in today's day and age, the hardest thing about social media, while it does provide so many different resources, different information. There's so many great things about it. The downside or one of the downsides is that you can compare yourself and your current progress to somebody else's chapter 10. And we're going to kind of go over this as far as years of training and you know, the differences between somebody that's a competitive athlete versus like an average Joe or whatever you would want to call it. I think it's difficult because people go onto social media, right? And they see a picture of like, I don't know, a CrossFit Games athlete or something, and they're like, oh, I wanna look like that. And then they do whatever, and five weeks goes by, and they're discouraged because they don't look like that. That is so very frustrating from all aspects, right? Because obviously the person feels like they're failing, but in all reality, you don't know what you're comparing yourself to in terms of that person's metabolism, genetics, age, how many years of training they have under their belt, what do they do for a living, do they have kids, what are their hormones like, what's their metabolism like. I mean, I could go on and on about the different factors that will play a role in muscle building. But I'm going to pause right here and say this. If you think that you are going to be able to do total body recomposition. I'm not talking like, oh, I wanna lose five pounds. If you are at point A and you're trying to get to point Z and you think that you can just do that in 90 days on someone's Instagram guide of you know booty bands and 60, 90 day transformations, I am here to tell you that you cannot, cannot do it. You are not going to gain 20 pounds of muscle in three months or whatever they're promising. I mean, with the exception of the outliers and steroid PED use, but we're talking about, you know, regular stuff right now. It's just not possible. So we need to wipe that off the market. If I could get rid of all of those tabloids and things that promise muscle gain and this and that, I wish I could, but I know I can't. That's just, that's just the industry, unfortunately, but it is not true. So I'm just going to start off by saying any quick fixes, any gimmicks, any things that seem too good to be true are probably too good to be true. So let's go over some common myths. These were the most 
frequent myths that I heard on my Instagram post when I asked you guys what myths you either believe or you've heard about muscle building. First one, if I lift weights, I will get veiny and bulky. I've covered this in previous videos because I hear this from female clients primarily. First of all, the term bulky, what does that even mean? I've been called bulky, I've been called fat, I've been called whatever. And I think everybody has their own definition of the word bulky. But if you think that you are going to walk into a gym and do a dumbbell curl and suddenly grow muscles overnight, don't worry. I've been trying to do it for five years and I'm like just starting to get a little bit of muscle. It doesn't happen that way. That's just the point. You don't get bulky by weight training. In all reality, a lot of people who are trying to lose weight have great success with weight training. And we'll talk again more about this in terms of total daily energy expenditure and how much your body is burning when you're weight training and things like that. No, this myth is not true. You are not going to get bulky. Vascularity, that's a totally another ballpark because that also has a huge uh, impact with genetics. Your genetics are gonna play a role in how vascular you look at any stage of your body fat. People also have different thicknesses in their skin and that's also something related to people's heritage and just again, genetics. Um, I don't forget the descent and which has thinner skin, but there is, there are some people who have much thinner skin and therefore they don't need to get to an extremely lean level for them to be as vascular as somebody like, let's say who needs to get down to like 12% body fat to see any veins in their arms. Highly genetic has nothing to do with actual weights. It's not like you're gonna do bicep curls and get a bicep vein. If that was the case, I would have had one by now. <laughs> Second myth, to get muscular, you have to eat only chicken and broccoli. I would hope at this point that this is not a myth that people are still currently believing because it is not true. I am not going to get into the best diets or what is for what. If you haven't seen my video on the best diets for weight loss or muscle gaining, I will link that video so you guys can check it out. But the short answer is no, you do not need to eat only chicken and broccoli to eat, I mean, <laughs> to gain muscle. My favorite one, you can get toned without gaining muscle. And again, I ask you, what is toned? What is, what is the meaning of the word toned? Somebody might think that I look toned and then somebody else could have a completely different idea as to what their version of toned looks like. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that is definitely a gray area there, but you have to understand that I think 90% of people, when they say that they want to look toned, in all actuality, what they're referring to is having muscle with lower body fat. And that can either come from either losing body fat if you're overweight, or if you are thinner, you need to gain muscle. Another like side point I wanna add, if you are already very thin with little to no muscle mass and you are trying to look toned or lean out, but you don't have a solid base of muscle underneath, when you lose fat and when you lose weight, it's going to pretty much look the same because you don't have a significant amount of muscle mass underneath once you start to lose weight. So keep that in mind. Favorite one, if I could only tell you how many times a day I hear, I would like to lose weight and gain muscle at the same time. Don't we all? It doesn't work like that. There is a very small exception, what we like to refer to as newbie gains when this can seem like it's happening in the first like 12 to 25 weeks of somebody like initially starting lifting. Like if you've never lifted before, you may notice that you are weighing less or your clothes are fitting looser, but you have more muscle growth. And that's just the initial phase of starting weight training when you've never done it before. For the rest of us, there really is no such thing or changing out fat for muscle. I've heard that one before too, and that also doesn't exist. In order to lose body fat, you have to eat in a caloric deficit, which means that you're eating less than you're burning. And in order to grow new muscle tissue, along with other factors, you have to eat in a caloric surplus, which means that you're eating more than you're burning. So obviously you can't eat less and you can't eat more than you're burning at the same time. So therefore it's important that you focus on one goal at a time. I like to point this out to my own clients too, because we all want to have our cake and eat it too. Do not get me wrong. I get it. And if that was the case, I feel like nobody would struggle with losing weight or struggle with gaining muscle. So you have to realize that it's important to just pick one of those goals to focus on at a time and then go from there because you cannot do both at the same time. Next myth, high reps and low weight is better for muscle gain. And again, this is kind of one of those things where I'll talk more about like what is for muscle gain, but this is highly personalized. And it also depends on your personal goals on what works for you because some people may not be able to do four sets of 20 of something where other people may be able to do only three sets of 10. And then is that considered high rep, low weight, you know? 
Generically speaking, people will say that lower reps and higher weight is better for strength training, which in turn, in turn is muscle building. Then you also have to think of hypertrophy and hypertrophy work. That's kind of considered higher reps and lower weight. So there is no one size fits all. There's not one is better for the other. The more weight that you lift, the bigger you will get. And again, dependent on what is more weight like, do you think I lift a lot of weight? You know what I'm saying? There's no like definitive answer for that. It's not like if you lift 200 pounds, you will be 200 pounds. It doesn't work that way. And um, I think that's kind of subjective in itself. Like you can't think that the more weight you lift, the bigger you're gonna get because somebody may get stronger while losing body fat. Like this one, men and women need to train differently for muscle gain. I wish I, I gotta find the study on this. I just read a study on this about training differently for men versus women in terms of muscle gaining. You do not need to train differently. There's no like women's program for muscle building that would be any different. A back squat is a back squat. A front squat is a front squat. Deadlift is a deadlift. Those are all compound movements, which are great for building muscle. And you don't have to be a guy or a girl to do them. So if you have been afraid of free weights or barbells or compound movements, but you're looking to gain muscle, I highly, highly encourage you to check it out. Of course, with you know supervision of a coach or a trainer, if you're new to it, so you execute the movement with proper form. But nonetheless, um, I think those things are often feared. And there's certain things in this industry that are geared towards like females only or you know just stuff like that and that's so unnecessary because you don't need to train a certain way just because you're a female training is training and lastly there are specific exercises for muscle growth versus fat loss well i will say specific hypertrophy work for example bicep curls will target your biceps back squats and front squats will target your quads, hamstrings, posterior development. There's those type of things, but it's not like you can do front squats for fat loss. Or like, I see that sometimes with like training guides that people sell on Instagram. They're like, oh, lunges for fat loss or booty fat loss or something, or like hip loss. That doesn't exist. Even though you can target specific muscle groups, true, but you can't do like hip abductors or adductors and think that you're gonna lose weight from your hips. You know what I'm saying? So all those movements, yes, they target certain things, but no, they're not for muscle building or for fat loss. All right, so let's get into what does work. What is the secret? To muscle building we all want to know so let's start out with the most important factor is that everybody is so different i wish that i could have told myself this five years ago because i was looking at regional level athletes when i was like 100 pounds and had zero strength in muscle thinking that i could do these things and look like them and it's just not true and it's just you know part of the diet industry part of the fitness culture part of social media it is what it is but you have to remember and accept that this is your own personal journey you have a different body type you have a different bone structure genetics metabolism environmental factors age training years training intensity types of training i mean the way you eat that's 10 things right off the bat that are different and variable between person to person. So I highly encourage you to not look at somebody else's physique. I'm not saying don't use them as motivation or inspiration because I totally did that and I still do that, but don't have these expectations that you are going to look like this person or have this amount of muscle as this person. So the foundation, the foundation of muscle building is strength, honestly, right? So when you are tearing your muscle fibers and building new muscle tissues, this is allowing your body to lift more, push more, run, more, whatever you're trying to do. It is getting stronger. So strength is the ultimate foundation of muscle building. This is also why, obviously, along with other factors, but for the most part, you have seen me gain a lot of weight, size, and strength over the years. My snatch, just to give you an example, when I first started CrossFit and weighed 100 pounds, was 95 pounds. Today, it's 170 pounds. I am just about 30 pounds heavier than I was when I first started. I'm leaner because I have more muscle mass, more muscle mass, having more muscle mass burns more calories overall, but obviously the more strong that somebody is, typically the more muscle that they have. So those kind of things go hand in hand for the most part. Then coupling with that, you have to eat more. I think the biggest mistake that I see primarily women doing is that they're trying to eat in such a severe caloric deficit and 
gain muscle at the same time and they're just running themselves in circles and not getting the results that they want. And it's just near impossible. I don't like to use like definitive words like that, but it is pretty much near impossible to gain muscle mass eating a thousand calories a day. It's it's just not, you're just not gonna be able to do it. You're gonna burn out. It's not going to happen the way that you want it to. And I think this is something that has been feared by women primarily is eating more because a lot of the questions that I got in this Instagram post was about how I dealt with the fat gain of particular muscle building periods in my life. It happens. You cannot gain solely lean muscle mass without gaining any fat with the exception of being on steroids or PEDs. It's just nearly impossible. There's going to be, again, variables that will impact how much fat you gain during these bulking cycles. For example, if you are um, eating in a 500 to 800 calorie surplus, you will probably gain more mass, some of which will be fat, then if you did a more conservative approach to a bulk and started off around 200 to 300 calorie surplus, that was a lot of the things that people were wondering about gaining fat during a bulking cycle, which is when you eat more. And it's just part of the process. So you have to be understanding that when you eat more, you most likely will be gaining weight and it is not going to be 100% lean muscle. Of course, this also includes eating enough protein. There is not a specific set of like, you need to eat this amount of protein per day. There's a generic formula or generic rule of thumb that suggests one gram of protein per pound of body weight. I usually, when I'm working with clients and myself, depending on where you are with your goals and where I am with my goals, I typically like to refer to lean body mass as a set point instead of total body mass. Because for example, if you're somebody that's really overweight, and you are, I'm just gonna use myself for an example. Let's say that I weighed 180 pounds at 5'2", and I'm overweight, mostly body fat. I would not want to eat 180 grams of protein, even though that's probably what a traditional macro calculator would say, based on that rule of thumb, eating one gram of protein per pound of body weight in general. So um, again, there is no one set way to do this, but that is a generic rule that some people will use. The other thing that's important too is to be realistic about this. And I kind of touched on that with like expecting yourself to gain 20 pounds of lean muscle in eight weeks or whatever the, whatever the Insta Fit girls are promising you in their booty guides. It's just not realistic. And we're going to kind of touch briefly on the fakeness and deceivingness of social media. I see it sometimes in the form of glute building is where I tend to see it the most. For example, selling glute programs that promises glute growth where maybe that person has an enhanced booty if you know what I'm saying. Or on the other side of things where you see somebody who is let's say my body statistics, for example, and deadlifting 500 pounds and saying that their program is gonna get you to deadlift 500 pounds. Meanwhile, they're on a concoction of anabolic steroids, PEDs, this, that, and the other. And it's just, not that they're saying they're not, but it's like their program is not gonna get you there, you know? So you have to be realistic with your goals and with your expectations of yourself. And this also kind of relates back to not comparing yourself to somebody else because you don't know where they are in the, pro in the process. You know, the steroid thing, it is what it is. I'm not saying that certain people are, or certain people are I'm not calling anybody out. I just want you guys to be aware that it does exist and it exists in pretty much every sport in from the NFL to the MLB to CrossFit to powerlifting non-tested federations bodybuilding I mean don't be ignorant to those type of things I'm not the kind of person that runs around accusing people of being on steroids when I don't know because I feel that that is unfair especially because that's been done to me and I am a 100% natural athlete and I feel like I don't have the right, nor do I care to judge if somebody is on steroids, but I do want you to realize that it's out there. And sometimes people use that to their advantage to sell their own training plans or nutrition supplements or uh, macro plans or whatever, because you want to look like them, but you don't really know what else they're taking to look like them. And then lastly, what else is really important that is highly underrated is sleep recovery sleep if you guys know me you know i am the biggest sleep snob of all like i do not mess around with my sleep eight nine hours minimum every night and that is like the golden key to muscle building you want to talk about secrets and like mass gainers and this and that 
get some sleep. Like if you are not eating properly and sleeping, you're just gonna be so frustrated with your muscle building results and that much I can promise you. You need to make sure that you're recovering enough and this is in all areas of your life. Like you cannot be over training, under sleeping, not eating enough and expecting your body to change and build a lot of muscle. It's just it's just not gonna happen. So, you know, obviously some people, the genetic freaks of the world, my boyfriend being one of them and his entire family, if you haven't noticed, is ridiculously jacked. And like, yes, I am slightly jealous of that. But there are, you know, those type of people who truly have genetic predispositions to help them build muscle. And of course, men have more testosterone than women, so obviously they will put on muscle easier, say that relatively because there are the exceptions and people who don't. But um, for the most part, there's not a one size fits all. And I think that's the most important thing that I could stress to you guys is that there's not a special key to muscle building. Eating in a surplus, getting enough sleep, eating the proper ratios of macronutrients and micronutrients, having a training program that is either progressive overload, hypertrophy, strength-based, whatever you like to do is going to help. But think about it like this. If there was a secret workout or program that created muscle building, everybody would just do it and nobody would have any issues getting muscle. The reason why people watch videos like this and research muscle building tips and tricks and all that is because it's difficult. It's not an easy thing to do. And especially as a female, you go through things like what I'm gonna talk about next reading through some of these questions. You go through gaining some fat, you go through phases of plateaus and strength plateaus and all these types of things. So I think it's also important to get to know yourself and your body and what works for you. So to close out this video, I would like to go over some of the questions that you guys asked me on this uh, picture because some of them were not uh, myths per se, they were specific questions in related to building muscle. So I do wanna go over some of them. There was a lot, there was 250 questions. So I'm not gonna go over every single one, but I do to talk about some of them because I really think that it's uh, important. No, right off the bat, have you ever taken a testosterone supplement? See, I get it too. Negatory, and I, like I have stated before, and I still would be open to doing this and making a video on it too, um, I challenged the people before who were accusing me of taking steroids um, to pay for a lab corp test, and I would go do it and film it and obviously come up natty. But then I thought to myself, there's really no point in doing that because people would still, they would say that I'm lying or that I rigged the test or something like that. So whatever, specific questions, no, natural. And it is possible to build muscle naturally. What is the difference between practical muscle building and bodybuilding? Can you recommend a specific type of workout that would help with practicals, CrossFit versus bodybuilding versus Olympic weightlifting? This is a great question because oftentimes people are looking for a new program to figure out what they wanna do. Bodybuilding is more so for aesthetics. That would be what I would place that category under. Whereas Olympic weightlifting, you're training as a sport, a strength sport. You're looking to get stronger in the Olympic movements, snatch, and the clean and jerk. As far as CrossFit goes, that's kind of a mix of both, plus metabolic conditioning, plus gymnastics. So if you're looking for like a full rounded type of program, I would suggest CrossFit, but I'm also kind of biased because I personally love CrossFit, but to each their own, whatever works for you. And again, there is not one specific way of training that is for muscle gain or for fat loss. Do you have to go through bulk and cutting cycles to gain muscle? How long should a bulk last? So. The thing with this is that it is gonna depend on your comfortability with bulking and how long ideally you want to bulk for. Sometimes this has something to do with uh, if you're bulking for a competition or you're bulking for just whatever, there's no specific time that is better. I have done bulks that have lasted eight weeks, which is on the short side for me. And I've seen people who are bulking or reverse dieting, for example, for like months and months at a time. It really just depends. I would say in my beginning phases of CrossFit, I bulked for like a solid year because I just wanted to gain as much as possible. Whereas now I haven't bulked since, um, after my last weightlifting meet at the end of October. And I did that bulk from October to the first week in January. So that was like, I wanna say nine weeks max. Um, but I have done previous bulks that are 12, 16 weeks. Again, totally up to you. It's not going to 
make or break. However, obviously, the longer that you do a bulk, the more chance that you're going to build more muscle. You can't just like do a bulk for a week and then cut back down. It doesn't work that way. I've been working on losing weight this last year and have done okay, but I also wanna build muscle too so that I'm toning instead of just losing the weight. And again, this is where I refer back to people misconstruing that toning is probably also losing weight. But if you are looking to lose weight, I still highly recommend including some type of weight training in some form because either way, the more muscle that you have, the more calories you burn, and that's what contributes to weight loss in general, calories in versus calories out. Is there any way to lose both fat and muscle? This is on the other side of things, if you're looking to lose muscle, just in the same way that when you gain uh, muscle, you also gain some fat. When you lose some fat, you also lose some muscle as well. And again, this will depend on the severity of your caloric deficit or caloric surplus, but, a lot of times when people are looking to lose muscle, like in the event that they gained more than they wanted to, they would just be probably better off reducing weight training and focusing more on body weight movements, cardio, longer endurance style things while reducing uh, caloric in intake as well. Because like I said, when you lose fat, you will lose some muscle just in general. I followed you for a long time and just noticed that recently you've gained so much muscle. Did you up your calories? And if so, can you be specific with your percentage of increase? Okay, this is a great question as well. And I do want to touch on this because I think what happens with bulking, and this is just from my experience, I gained like, I don't know, 10 pounds maybe from October to the end of December, beginning of January. And people were saying that I looked fat, um, that I was puffy. And then when I lost that fat, because after I was done bulking, I slowly transitioned into more of a maintenance state, but I also increased my CrossFit and metabolic conditioning, which will burn more calories, therefore putting me probably in a slight caloric deficit on some days, but not intentionally. And so I lost a lot of the fat that I had gained and I look more muscular now because I don't have a bigger fluffier layer of body fat covering my muscles. So I think people have this misconception that I suddenly like just now gained all this muscle because I look leaner, but in all actuality, I gained that muscle months ago when I was in my bulk when y'all were calling me fat. <laughs> so now I look leaner because I've lost the fat on top of my muscles and I've continued doing hypertrophy work as I've talked about in previous videos. And so I just appear more muscular because you can see more of my muscles, if that makes sense. Is it true that the the more muscle you put on, your metabolism gets faster, so your maintenance calories go up. So this is kind of what I was talking about, about the reverse diet, because when you have more muscle mass, your body burns more and you require a higher amount of food to maintain your current weight because you weigh more due to weighing more, having more muscle, even if you're leaner. Sometimes that's not always the case. For me, that was the case because like I said before, I gained almost 30 pounds throughout my five-year journey, and that's pretty typical as far as weight gaining goes, which I also think people forget as well. Like I did not just suddenly gain 30 pounds from December to now. This has been since 2013. So again, a great example of somebody maybe comparing themselves to me, but they don't realize that I've been doing this since I was 100 pounds with no muscle. Abs, people were commenting on my abs. Let me, let me talk about this very briefly. Ab placement in your abdominal wall is also really genetic. I have what I like to call like turtle shell abs where they kind of are sticking out. This is also because I have a horrible habit of hyperextending and standing with my stomach stick sticking out. So that's not really the greatest thing. But when I was 10 pounds heavier and still on my like bulking, fluffy, puffy days, you could still see like some of the outline of my abs because that is just the way my genetics are. I don't typically carry a lot of fat on the front part of my stomach where some people will carry it there. I carry mine more so on my hips and my lower back and in my face, obviously, as everyone so nicely pointed out to me. You can't get abs by building muscle. You can obviously train your core, eat properly, but it's gonna depend on your genetics on how lean you have to be to show your abs. Because I know some people who are by far leaner than me, but their abs do not show. And it's just because of their genetics. And I am not extremely lean, but yet my abs will pretty much show, I don't wanna say 100% of the time, but just the way that they're built and the way that they stick out, you'll just see them more so than somebody who doesn't. I think the last thing that was talked about quite frequently was asking how much they should be eating for muscle gain. And so I will leave you guys with this that I suggest hiring a coach for things like this because again, like I referenced with the calculator, that's gonna be a very generic 
a starting point. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but it's just not going to be tailored to you specifically. And I say this because you have people that work nine to five jobs that sit at a desk all day and then get to a CrossFit class at 6 p.m. And you know, the warm ups 15 minutes, the strength portion, you're not really burning too much. Then like the Metcons 10 minutes and they stand around and talk and they leave and they really only burn like 200 calories for the class and the rest of their day they're sedentary. So that person, maybe they have the same statistics as you in terms of like age, height, weight, whatever, that you, the stuff you would put into a calculator, you know? But what they're going to require is going to be drastically different than what somebody like a construction worker or even like a PE coach or somebody that walks around all day gets a lot more steps in the day, you're gonna require a lot different of an amount. So to end this video, there is not a specific thing like I can tell you guys you need to eat 30% protein and 40% carbs and blah, blah, blah. It's just not the case. It's going to depend on your current body fat and how much muscle you already have, your training stimulus, the type of job you have, how much energy expenditure you personally expend throughout the day. Um, and what you feel comfortable with because you may be brand new to this and find it extremely difficult to eat 130 grams of protein, whereas other people might feel like that's little to nothing for them. Keep that in mind. This video is getting really long, so I'm gonna end it here. I hope this was helpful in some way. Let me know if you learned something in the comment section below or if you have any other questions on muscle building or muscle gain. And just remember to be patient because literally, if I could have gone back five years ago and told myself I'm not gonna be satisfied with the muscle that I'm building until five years from now, I would be like, wow, really? I'm not doing this. <laughs> no, but you know what I'm saying? Like I just now, after five years, well, one year of like regular training and then four years of CrossFit, finally feel like I have a decent amount of muscle. And I just thought I was gonna do that in like, you know, two months and that's just not the case. So yes, it can be done naturally. Yes, it's gonna take some time. Nutrition is important, sleep is important, but overall consistency and patience is gonna be the top keys for muscle building. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys and I'll see you in my next one.